Welcome to Haxby Shed. Today's project is to build a two post drill holder. I bought some bits, I'll show you what they are. I'm going to take my usual approach and use parts that I've already got, such as this 20mm boring bar holder for the multifix, and then buy other parts, some of which I can machine and some of which will be ready made that I can incorporate somehow. This is Phosphor Bronze PB102, which I can use as a holder and as a bearing for the drill spindle. This is an ER11 long spindle collet chuck holder. And this is a part which was from a 3D printer. And it's 10 millimeters at one end and six millimeters at the other. I think I ordered it one day and it arrived the next, about three pound 50, so that was perfect and that will form part of the drive because here's a hexagon drill drive so I'll make that fit in there and then I've got this flexible drive which I can then put onto there which will go in there and put the drill on the end of there so that will be uh, that'll be it really and I've got these ER11 collets and each one has a range of half a millimeter so that's the basic uh, project and uh, we'll start by machining out this bearing bar, this bronze, phosphor bronze. Just get a bit of oil into the bearings first before I start the lathe up. I'm going to drill this a bit at 9.5 and then I'm going to try a 10 millimetre chucking reamer and see what the finish size is and see how close it is to my ER11 collet spindle and make sure it's not too sloppy because sometimes when you use reamers they can still make a hole that's a bit bigger than you want. I've put the reamer into an ER32 collet because I know that my Morse Taper 3 Jacobs chuck really isn't that accurate. Well it goes in okay, but it's a bit wobbly. The hole that's made by the reamer must be a fraction over 10 millimetres. I'll have to think about whether that's going to be okay or not, but I don't know what other options I've got really, making a hole that small. Maybe it'll be alright when it's four inches long, when the hole is four inches deep. Because it's not very deep, and it's only that look. So, it's only that. The other thing I've realised is my reamer can't ream this to the full depth so I'm going to have to reverse this well this three jaw runs out quite a bit so I may well have to uh, ream it in the four jaw which is a bit of a chew really but I can do a lot of work in the three jaw before I switch to the four I'm going to bore it through with a long eight and a half mil drill just to rough it I think it's one of those typical eBay drills that are blunt. Oh yes sir, I only sharpened it this morning. It's absolutely perfect. Don't think so. I think we're rubbing our way through this. Never mind, I'll keep going. I'm gonna use a drill doctor to sharpen this drill. And uh, I've had mixed results with this. Sometimes I'm lucky. Sometimes I'm not. The problem I often have is I can't get enough rake on the drill. But anyway, we'll see how we go. So you put the drill in fairly loose so it can move like that. And you put the front of this land up against these fingers. And then you push this holder into this receptacle here with this white triangle pointing upwards. And you allow the drill to slip out 
and that sets the depth. And when you've done that, you can lock it like that. And then you start from one of these marks. There's two marks there, there's one mark there, and you turn it 180 degrees at a time. So we'll see what happens. There's quite a fast uh, flute on this drill, so it might have set it off slightly off in the wrong location, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> And the trick is not to push too hard. So we're starting to see something happening there. Well, it's stopped cutting now, but it's not cleaned it up fully. So I'm gonna reset the depth and go through that process again. Well, that's cleaned up reasonably well, and uh, I'll give that a try now. Well, I still don't think that drill would win prizes, but it's a bit better. Having got all the way through with the 8.5, I started to drill through with the 9.5 and it was just spinning in the chuck because the drill was just getting seized and snagged in the work. So it's not proving particularly easy to work with. Anyway, I'm going to use a 3 8 drill now, which is uh, near enough 9.5, but it's a Morse taper drill and it'll grip much more tightly than I can get the plain shank drill to uh, clamp up in the chuck. Well, that drill cut pretty well, but it was still trying to seize up. But I should have used an imperial drill from the beginning. They're much better. Next, to machine it to length. That's now machined to length and drilled out at 9.5. And I'm actually thinking I might just get away with it. This reamer's just about long enough. I just don't want it to bind inside and seize up. But this way, I could possibly do it in the three jar. Actually, with a bit of messing about, I managed to get it quite accurate in the three jar. This gauge is in a hundredths of a millimeter, so it's five one hundredths of a millimeter uh, deviation, which is uh, two thou. That's okay. Well, I'm going to try and get the reamer all the way through that. That's not bad actually. There's a little bit of movement on it, but there's very little. That'll be fine. I'm going to put an oiler into this bronze bush. Not in that position, actually at the midpoint along its length. But for it to work effectively, I really need to make a scratch inside the bar that the oil will run along. So to do that, I'm going to use this 3 8 boring bar and I'm going to um, grind up a bit of that 3 16 high speed steel rod. So I'll cut a bit off that rod with the uh, air cut off tool. And then when I've done, uh, there'll be just enough of the tool sticking out of the boring bar that I can just make a scratch along inside. Handy things these air cut off tools. <laughs> This is what's left of my Triumph Tiger 110. About 1978, I came shooting down this slip road onto a dual carriageway, and I looked behind me and I saw a Honda 4 750, and I thought, oh, mine will be quicker than that. So going down the slip road, I over revved it in second gear, threw the rod, big bang, metal flew up into the air. Anyway, of course I stopped, and a big pool of oil underneath the bike well, I just pretended that I was stopping there anyway, and uh, the Honda 750 just thrummed by and I was um, a bit cheesed off. I've set up the tool. I'm gonna to have to do this from both ends, reversing the work, because my boring bar just isn't long enough. So I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna get that lined up, but uh, we'll have a go and see. Well, that's the first ring cut at this end. I've put the bed stop at this end to stop me coming out too far. 
because I don't want the scratch to actually exit this bush. I want to stop at the ring that I've created. And it's working. So now I'll have to try and line it up from the other end when I swap it round. I'm going to use a 516s end mill to create a pocket and I'm hoping then that the 8mm oiler will just be a press fit into that. This has not gone exactly to plan. The pocket I made is too big for a press fit. This material is really quite tough, I didn't realise. And so I'm going to solder that in there. I'm going to put a flat on top of this where the tool post holder is going to clamp on. That's just put a nice flat on there for the screws in the tool holder to press onto. I've deliberately angled the oiler upwards slightly. Get in there slowly. I've put flux on it and I'm just going to use my light electrical solder for this because I don't want to be pushing this out of the way. If I use the heavy solder that's what will happen. Well I'm pleased with that, it's taken all the way around. Good job. Whilst that's cooling off I'm going to grind a flat or two on the end of this shaft to take these grub screws. There we are. And these two screws will tighten on those two flats. And the reamer still goes through, that's a good sign. <laughs> Yep. And the oil comes out. <laughs> Messing up my floor. Next is to drill this hole larger to take this. Drill this out now to seven millimeters. In a recent video I adjusted the clutch and the brake and I had a question, how efficient is the brake? Well really I think the best way I'll just show you. Next I'm going to use the air cutoff tool again to shorten that to that length. So there we are. The end of the drill is two inches out from the centre line of the lathe. If that's not enough we can move this multi-fix back to here which will give us about another inch and also we could clamp this just on these two screws and bring that back to here. So that could give us about four and a half inches from the centre line of the lathe which I think is enough for most purposes. I'm quite pleased with that. I hope that was useful to you. Thank you for watching Hacksby Shed.